How you doing everybody? It's uh, April the 15th, 2010 and it's in the middle of the morning and uh, I was going to continue on that last little post about uh, Sean Quinn, that's what I wanted to do and I said it yesterday, i do some just quick um, sort of brief resume on him and about the problems that he finds himself in at the moment but I did some work on it yesterday, some just to get up more up to date with it and I just cannot believe, it's just unbelievable. It's truly, truly unbelievable. This is a man who heads up uh, one of the biggest companies in Ireland. It's called the Quinn Group, and it's a holding company. And inside it are 17 companies. I think there's 17 companies that I can make out. And uh, they're very diverse. There's everything from glass bottling companies to property development companies, to hotels, to quarries, and uh, one of the final big things where they got involved in a few years back is the insurance element of things and he heads up one of the biggest insurance companies in Ireland called Quinn Direct. Now, normally I don't go on about individuals and about, but this is Ireland's richest man. He's one of the most powerful men in Ireland. He's probably one of the biggest fan of followers that there is in Ireland. All right, big supporter of the, this government and uh, he's in dire trouble. And I wouldn't normally give a flying hoot about these fellas been in dire trouble, but I do on two counts. One, he employs five and a half thousand people, they tell me, in this country. So I'm deeply concerned about their jobs. And the second thing is a large amount of money that his companies have borrowed come out of our bank, the Anglo-Irish Bank that we now own. And the chances of us getting that money back are very, very slender. Now, what's going to happen is before <coughs> a year from now, for another year's out, uh, this man at the moment employs 5,500 people. He will not be employing that 5,500 people. What's going to happen is, uh, to explain to you how this has come about, it's very simple. This man is in debt, this man's companies are in debt to four, they owe 4.8 billion euros that's 4,800 million euros are owed by his companies that's correct 4,800 million euros and 2.8 billion of that 2,800 million of that he borrowed from Anglo-Irish Bank technically from us so he owes us that money now we'll never get that money back our bank will never get that money back Okay. Uh, I don't think so. <coughs> I may get some of it back. We're not going to get all of it back. The he borrowed then, uh, as I say, the total indebtedness that he has is four point eight billion, four thousand eight hundred. Uh, Two thousand eight hundred is from Anglo Irish. Six hundred million is from private bondholders, and the rest is from other banks, which don't do it. Oh, sorry, it's an irrelevancy. But. Uh, what happened was, we have now got a new financial regulator. He's an Englishman. His name is Matthew Elderfield. And the reason we have him is because of the debacle that we find ourselves in. With the two <coughs> Muppets that we had before, who were, uh, well the four, you know our gang of four. Have a look at those. And they are, in order, Patrick Neary, so-called financial regulator, who reports directly to the head of the central bank, John Hurley, who reports directly to the finance minister, Biff O'Conn, who reports directly to the Taoiseach, Bertie Ahern. These four men, we all have said, I've said it numerous times before, they should be in jail, two charges, criminal negligence, and conspiracy. Both them. All four of them. Psst, gone. We know that's not going to happen. I digress. We have a new financial regulator now. And in order to get the NAMA money, we had, to, we had to get somebody that the European Central Bank would give the tick, tick off on. And this is this man, Matthew Elderfield. And he comes from one of the most, one of the dodgiest spots in the world, a place called Bermuda, where all the funny money is lying in various banks. It's a British Dominion. 
So he's seen it all. He's seen all the world cowboys come and go and everything else. He's a young man, but he's been doing this for around about 12 years. So he knows, I'd say, most of the angles. He's seen most of the angles. And he went directly and told Quinn, if you want to keep trading, you've got to increase the liquidity of your insurance company because you've been taking money out of you. That's the only, that's the only, he didn't say this, but that's the only logical deduction we can make that what was happening is the Quinn Group were using Quinn Direct as a cash cow. And when money was coming in, the insurance premiums were coming in, they were being diverted into the other Quinn companies. That's the only reason. Because there are specific regulations laid down that the liquidity of all insurance companies has to be kept at a certain level for the rainy day when the shit will hit the fan. When a plane comes out of nowhere and flies into a factory complex or something and it's insured with Quinn Direct and they have to come up with a hundred million or something like that. Okay. And that's why you have this high level of liquidity. For bad days. For rainy days. So anyway, they didn't have that in place. And what happened is, as a result of that not in place, the regulator said, if you don't come up with 150 million now, we're going to close you down. We're going to appoint a regulator and he's going to control the situation. So what that will mean is, at the end of the day, the key element within that whole group will be removed. Poof, taken out of place. And the whole group, the whole Quinn group, will be under pressure. You have to think of the economics of this. Imagine for every person he employs, he employs 5,500 people. Every single person that is in that group is employed directly on the back of one million euros of debt. Just think about that. That's some operation. Imagine you reading that in a company's prospectus. You get in the accounts of a company and you have a bit of brains and you work that out. Hold on a minute. Every person that's employed there, he had to borrow a million euros to employ 5,500 people. He had to, he had to borrow f nearly five thousand million euros to employ these people put it into perspective I have a, a colleague of mine I went to school with him I say he's a colleague of mine it's not the wrong word a friend of mine and uh, he employs a large number of people he has a business in the north of Ireland he employs them all over Europe all over the world in fact he employs 1900 people and his company is capitalized the last time I looked at his accounts He's capitalised at less than two hundred million pounds sterling, so he employs ten people for every million, approximately. So that's to put it in perspective. And by the way, his business is not dissimilar to what Quinn does. Not not dissimilar. It's a holding company and various companies involved. But he, that's what he does. But his main concern is to employ people. The Quinn thing doesn't seem to be that. It just seems to be like, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but it reads very bad. And that's on the liability side. On the asset side, the other side of the balance sheet, uh, his assets, they reckon, are worth less than two billion. Read this, Dan. Read this Dan White article. And the other thing is, I put a link up to uh, a whole series of articles out of the Sunday, uh, the Sunday Times, the English Sunday Times. And they've been covering this man's growth as one of Ireland's key people over the last uh, seven or eight years. And I think they've, I think they've several hundred articles, if not a thousand. So it's, it's a huge amount, a huge number of articles. So you can just dip into them and see them, what, 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 what's been going on. But we're at the stage now where Matthew Elderfield has basically put it up to the government. Now the government cannot risk challenging this man, Matthew Elderfield. If this man, Matthew Elderfield, were to jump ship and resign his position, and say he couldn't get the cooperation of the government in dealing with a recalcitrant uh, businessman who operated a key, one of the key insurance companies in Ireland, the ramifications on the international markets would be huge for Ireland. It would be huge. And the Europeans would be dancing, they'd go dancing up and down. And the fallout could be enormous. So I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think anything's going to happen to Mr. Ellerfield. As I say, my immediate concern is the jobs of those 5,500 people. And I do know one thing, 
there will not be 5,500 people employed in that company within one year. Just watch this space. Sorry but true. Anyway, listen, we'll talk more.